Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to Who's Your Daddy? As I compare a Timex Marlin from the 1960s to a Timex Marlin from, well, last month. Now, I steadfastly refused to review any Timex on the channel for the first couple of years after a particularly bitter experience with an incredibly noisy Expedition Scout. I began to soften 12 months ago though, and since then I have reviewed the Q, the M79, this year a Waterbury Chronograph, the Milano XL, and now finally the Marlin reissue, arguably the watch that I should have reviewed before any of the others. This one was launched about three years ago now, almost exactly three years ago, and it is a faithful reissue of the original watch from the 1960s. I don't think I have seen any retro reissue that is so close to the original. These watches are almost identical. But given the fact that you can buy a 1960s original on eBay for less money than you can buy the reissue, which one should you buy if indeed you should buy either? I have bought neither. These two are on loan from me from a subscriber called Jason. Now, Jason is a friend of a friend and we met a couple of weeks ago at said friend's birthday party. We had a great chat about watches. He's got a fantastic collection. He loaned me these two and he's also loaned me a brand new Alpinist, which you can look forward to seeing on the channel in a couple of weeks time. So let's flip the camera and have a look at not one, but two Marlins. So this video is essentially a review of the new watch on the left here on the black leather strap, though when vintage watches like the one on the right on the brown leather are available for less money than the reissue and still in pretty good shape, surely that should be a consideration. Why would you buy the new one when you can buy the old one and save a bit of money and get the original, the real deal instead? Well, I think there are definitely pros and cons to both, and I'm going to try and talk about those later on. Now, I've been tinkering with these two watches all day, and they are just about identical, as you can see here. I've only been able to discern maybe four differences between them. The word waterproof has been deleted from the dial of the new watch. You're technically not allowed to claim that a watch is waterproof anymore. They have also deleted the hour markers, little circular markers on the hour indexes from the new watch. The new watch does have drilled lugs though, whereas the old one doesn't. And I reckon there are some traces, at least of the remnants of loom on the hands of the old watch, whereas there is no loom on the hands of the new watch. But dimensionally, they're identical. And technically, they're very, very similar. They both have manual wind mechanical movements and they both have domed acrylic crystal covering the dial. So Timex really have then stayed faithful to the original design with this reissue. And that means sticking to the original sizing of 34 millimeters. What does that look like when we compare it to a couple of reference points from today's watch market? Well, this is the SKX 013. That's the small SKX. This is the SKX 009. And you can see just how small and delicate that little Marlin looks in that SKX sandwich. Now, the fact that they stuck with the sizing of 34 millimeters for this reissue is going to take it out of the equation for a lot of guys. I appreciate. I think Timex also appreciated that, which is why they released a larger automatic 40 millimeter version of the Marlin in the years since this one was released. I don't think it's nearly as pretty, though. It's also a bit more expensive coming in at $260 as opposed to the $199 of this manual wine wee guy. But the fact that they stayed faithful to that vintage sizing at 34 millimeters has opened this watch up to a whole other market. And that's guys, I'll include myself in that number, who don't mind a slightly smaller watch. I've got several 34 mils in my collection, most of which are vintage watches, to be honest. This one, I can see the appeal. It's like buying a vintage watch, but without the risk. So as stated several times before, 34 millimeters in diameter, Bang on 10 millimeters thick, though a lot of that, almost half you would say, probably about four of those millimeters coming from that piece of acrylic crystal. I would say it was boxed rather than double domed. Obviously it's got a bit of doming at the top, but it's got a distinct step and you can actually see through. So you get a bit of distortion around the perimeter, but you can see through the edge if you see what I mean. I'll show you that in more detail later on. So 10 mil thick, 41 super compact lug to lug of 41, 18 millimeter lug width, a la the original, and weighed in, if I can even use that term, this one comes on the two piece full lizard leather strap, not sure about that. It weighs in at 
30 grams. Now that I think is the lightest mechanical watch that I have reviewed on the channel. That's kind of Casio F91 light. Finish on the stainless steel case is super, super simple. Just high polished throughout. High polished unsigned crown here as well. That is semi recessed into the case. Doesn't quite jut out, which is I think a nice little piece of design. It is quite small though. So you are gonna have to get used to manually winding this one with a rather small crown if you do pick one up. Drilled lugs though, as I mentioned earlier on, making it easy to swap away from that lizard strap. And there you see a side-by-side -side comparison. Again, staying very faithful to the original in terms of the dimension and the finish. Press on stainless steel case back. Now you can't advertise waterproof on the front, but you can advertise 30 meters of water resistance on the back. Hand winding movement, stainless steel case, and a slightly cheeky little circa 2017, the year that this watch was re-released. And again, no surprises, even the case back bears more than a passing resemblance to the original. But the dial is where this wee guy really shines. Very, very pretty. Kind of champagne silver, I would say. Strong sunburst effect here. Nice and kind of metallic looking sheen throughout. We have applied markers. Vintage style Arabics at the evens and batons at the odds. Now there is a printed minute track around the outer edge, but as mentioned earlier on, it doesn't have those little circular markers for the indexes at the hours. Sword handset, all black, unloomed, I think nicely proportioned. Again, virtually a copy and paste from the original watch. Now they have added a black dial version and a gold coated stainless steel case version, but I'd be sticking with this one. I think this really encapsulates the look of the era, let alone the original watch. Now this is a box fresh watch, so the strap is still pretty stiff. I don't want to do too much damage to it before I hand it back to Jason to break in. Lizard never really been my cup of tea though. I suppose there is a bit of a, a retro appeal to it, but I'd be swapping that out for something else. At least they have branded the buckle and tang. You can swap that over to a different strap, I'm sure. But what of the movement? What lies beneath that shiny stainless steel case back? Well, with due deference to Jason, I'm not gonna prize the case back off to show you. I'm gonna put in some pictures that I found on the internet instead. It's a Seagull. It's a Seagull ST6. That is a rotorless manual wind version of an automatic movement that they've been producing for many, many years. Timex, perhaps unsurprisingly, have been reluctant to advertise the fact that they're using a cheap and minuscule Chinese movement in their $200 reissue. 17 joules manually winding obviously and it also hacks. At least it seems they've done a little bit of decoration here and there and at least they branded it as Timex. Let's pop this one on the time grapher to find out how Jason's brand new watch is performing. Well, uh, I suppose it's performing pretty much how you'd expect a cheap Chinese movement to be performing. You're not going to buy one of these for accuracy, let's be honest. I think you are buying it really for the visual appeal. You're buying it for the size, you're buying it for the look, you're buying it for the feel, you're buying it for that retro thing. Don't expect accuracy because you probably won't get it. I'm sure it could be adjusted, but... I don't know how many owners are gonna pay $200 for a watch and then start pulling it apart and adjusting it themselves or taking it into watchmakers. I wouldn't bother. I reckon this is an occasional wear rather than an everyday wear watch anyway, which is just as well. But on wrist, it really is a wee cutie. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. It looks small, I'll grant you that. It definitely looks small, but a small watch, once you wear it for a couple of days, you really get used to the size. I don't think it's too small though. I think it looks quite good. Maybe the overhead shot will be even more useful than usual today to put this watch into perspective, literally and figuratively. You also see what I mean about that kind of silver champagne. It's a really nice little dynamic dial, very much like the Longines that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, but at a fraction of the cost. Now outside, admittedly, slightly different camera settings. It looks more silver than champagne slash salmon that you were getting from the indoor shots only seconds ago. It is very pretty though, and you see what I mean? Distortion around the edges, but when I hold the watch at an angle, you can see right through to the applied numerals. Now on wrist, this strap is box fresh as mentioned. I've got it on maybe one notch looser here than I would normally have it. Really nice though on wrist, very unobtrusive. No problem slipping under a shirt cuff Monday to Friday if you are wearing this one to the office, that is certain. So a faithful and very attractive vintage reissue that retains all of the charm of the original, the same size as the original, and perhaps not all that accurate, but at least it should be reliable and comes with a warranty. 
But what of the vintage version, I hear you ask? Well, yes, there are plenty of these available on eBay for around 100 US dollars, about half the price of the original. I think Jason paid about half for the old one that he paid for the new one. One problem with a vintage watch though, it's snowing all over my time grapher. I have never seen a set of figures like that before. This one, the old movement running slower at 18,000 vibrations per hour as opposed to 21,600 on the reissue all over the shop though, and who knows how long this one will last. But if this isn't gonna be a daily wear watch, if this is gonna be part of a collection, part of a rotation for most guys and girls, I would imagine who are picking up either of these two, then is accuracy really that much of a factor? If it's a watch that you're gonna wind, put on your wrist and wear for an evening or for a day or for a couple of days perhaps, then put it back in the box and leave it for a week, a month or two months before it reemerges, then maybe it doesn't matter quite so much that that one is all over the place and that one could certainly be better. For my money though, given how close these two watches are in terms of looks, I would be paying the extra, I would be going for the new one. I think the warranty and the fact that it is likely to run relatively problem free for far more years than the vintage one, that would sway me towards new rather than used. I must have reviewed maybe 200, $200 watches that had better specs than this one, but I can't remember too many that were as charming as this little guy is. So there you have it, Timex Marlin, old meets new. Definitely a bit of a niche one here. I can't see half of you grabbing your credit cards and heading to eBay and picking up either the old or the new. 34 mil, I think, is gonna limit its appeal. Certainly it has plenty of appeals to me though. I've got several other 34s in my collection and I could see myself grabbing one of these at some stage. I have had my eye on this one for the last couple of years. For me, new, 100% of the time. It's the warranty, a Seagull ST6, not that impressed with the choice of movements, but the fact that it is warranted and it is far likely to run far more accurately than the vintage one, which could, let's face it, explode at any minute, would see me stump up the extra cash, even though it does lack the romance, shall we say, of picking up a used watch from the 1960s. Still plenty of these about though for less money if you're prepared to take a risk. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in a future video.